I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. The Gospel, and while some super religious folks are scared of it, that's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. The Gospel is the proclamation that because of the death and resurrection of Christ, God has saved you. That it was undeserved, His salvation. You didn't merit it. You don't um, work for it. You get it for free. The cost being paid by Jesus. Because of the death of Christ, he saves you. You can't go to hell believing that Jesus died and rose again for you. You will have eternal life. The deep, dark deeds that keep you up at night have been forgiven. The terrible things that, that, that you are frightened about, that you think, I'm going to go to hell for that. Well, he took them upon himself. They died with him. They stayed in the grave. He rose again from the dead and he lives now and you live in him. That in Christ, God has reconciled the world to himself. That in Christ, you have eternal life. That in Christ, if Jesus is at the right hand of God, you will too. And there's no hyperbole in this. There's no sort of too much about this. If you have sins, he is your savior. If you believe that he rose again, that he died and rose for you, you have life in his name. And that is a scary message for religious folks. And what I mean by that is, if you think that you're not so bad, if you think that things are basically good for you, or good with you, if you think that, that, that you're getting better all the time, or that uh, Jesus saves you, but now you've moved on to bigger and better things, and you hear this gospel that sinners, adulterers, idolaters, tax collectors, icky people, tattoos, um, uh, cheaters, uh, thieves, robbers, repenting of their sins, receive the forgiveness of sins, and they have eternal life too, that can seem a little, well, that can put you off a little bit. Especially if you think that this gospel for sinners, that sinners are saved in Jesus and that his death is the atoning sacrifice for my sins and the sins of the whole world, that whoever believes in him must be saved. You might think, well, if you believe that, then you might just live in your sins some more. And Dr. Luther didn't care that people would say, if you preach that gospel, uh, Luther, if you tell people that their sins are forgiven, they'll just live in their sins. Because he knew that that gospel that he preached would give the spirit who would work faith and life and good works in those who heard, who heard his gospel. He didn't worry about whether or not people would, would sin more that grace would abound because he knew that they were baptized and that they were forgiven and that they had eternal life in his name. The gospel is scary to those who want to earn something. The gospel is scary for those who are afraid that people will live something different than Christian with this gospel. The gospel is scary for those who have not been saved from scary things. And the good news is, Jesus saves the people who have been saved from scary things and the people who are scared that the people who are saved from scary things might live in their sins. No favorites. Whether you start work um, at the beginning of the day or you're an 11th hour sort of Christian, Jesus saves you. But we might think, we might sort of pause for a second and just contemplate this gospel. The same Jesus that saves people who don't deserve being saved died for those who think they deserve to be saved. The same Jesus who died for people who have no hope other than Christ, died for those who, well, are pretty good people and might look at those who have no hope other than Christ and think, you can do better. Both hear the same law. Your works can't save you. And both hear the same gospel. So we might, as Christians, not be so afraid of the gospel even if we think that somebody might use it 
well, to sin. They never needed the gospel to sin. So you might want to repent of that thought. They were doing good at sinning before, but the gospel, the forgiveness of sins, is the only thing to enliven them out of their life to a new life spent living not for themselves, but for Jesus. You see, the law kills. The law kills both the one who has no hope other than Jesus and the Christian who is thinking, well, I'm doing a pretty good job. Now, the law kills both. But only the gospel makes us alive to live for others. Only the gospel gives us the freedom to pick up the law and love our neighbor. Not the law. Not the law. And the answer is not pulling back on the gospel. As if the gospel's the problem. The answer is to receive all the more the good news that this gospel would teach us to believe, that would enliven us to believe that our sins are forgiven solely by the death of Christ. That would enliven us to believe that we have no hope other than in him. And then, having been enlivened to thank and pray, serve and obey him in, by loving those around us. Think about it. This gospel's scary. It's scary. It doesn't make any sense. It's all Jesus and none us. But if you think about it, if you receive this all Jesus and none us, you'll find that's the most comforting thing in the world and that only being saved all by Jesus and none by you can you truly love those around you. Think about it. I'm Pastor George Borkart and this has been another Higher Things video short.